Welcome back to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're talking about one of the most profound questions you could ever ask anyone. Fan or fanatic? What's the difference between the two? A fan is somebody that admires another thing or a person. But a fanatic, a fanatic is somebody that's batshit crazy. And you know what that means for collectors. Fan or fanatic? To be or not to be, whether tis noble or in the mind, to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, and by opposing end them. What does it mean to be a fan or a fanatic, and can you be both? Yeah, I think you can, and I think I certainly fall into that category. Recently, I've been going through some boxes. I have 40-plus full-size boxes of comic books, and I'm going to air those episodes, I think, in the fall. Um... But I pulled a couple of things out and set them to the side to show you a few things in the nook here. Um, other than comic books, I'll show you a few other things too. But we're going to start with one guy, Neil Adams. And as a fan and as a collector, of course, I have three of these beautiful editions right here. As you can see, I've shown these before. You're going to see them again. That would be Superman 233, Kryptonite Nevermore. So I'm a, I'm a fan, but am I a fanatic too? Sometimes I think I can be. And I'm going to show you what that means right here in the nook. So I'm going to hold up this stick. Try not to be wobbly here. And I'm sure you can see a couple of things on the wall here that might look familiar. And let's talk about them. I'm going to switch the, the viewpoint. And we're going to go over here. So let's start with, of course, we have the statue. I forget who it was that sculpted that Kryptonite Nevermore statue. I have a, a model. I am a big blue fan and collector. And then we have this here on the wall. This is a, a sign uh, print from Neil Adams. And this is a, a print that he painted. He hand-painted this as a color guide for the publisher, and then he signed it. And I bought this at one of his online auctions, and I'm really glad to have it. But we're not quite done with Neil Adams yet. We have a print, another Superman statue, of course. We have a print that I bought from him at a convention of that same very same issue that he signed for me. And then, of course, we have to have... We have to have this. We have to have the... We have to have the Hot Wheels car. Now that's kind of ridiculous. And when you come down the wall here, we see some photos, and there is myself with Neil Adams. I am a Neil Adams fan. Below him is Guy Smith. Above him is Roy Rogers Jr., Dusty Rogers himself. And then I have some family photos. So Superman is very much a part of this den. Let me give you a little more look over here in the corner. When the door is shut... Um, I have some posters here that I put on the wall, and I have posters everywhere. I have a large selection of vintage posters, and those are all on the wall. And, of course, if you look right here, what does the big blue fan have? A Superman costume. And I have some other posters. These posters you see up here were uh, signed by Douglas Fairbanks. And then we'll come around here to my normal area. And, of course, you'll see those very same comic book. All right, so let's pop back into focus here. And here I am back in my normal little corner here in the den. This is a very small room. And I've populated it with fan material and fanatical material, as you've seen. And it's a difficult question. Sometimes you go crazy, right? So a fan, again, is someone that admires something or someone. A fanatic is someone that, like me, who's batshit crazy. Just completely off the wall. Total Neil Adams fan. Um, you know, and a total Big Blue fan. And I reach down here and you'll see these again. You know, you have the first original Superman annual. Uh, that's my original from 63 or 4. And, of course, I have two reprints. Uh, I don't need the reprints. And years ago, I made certain that I had all of these Superman 
annuals. I don't quite have them all. I think number two is missing. This is number three. Then we have number four here. And then we have number six. And then I have number 11 and I have many others. These are out of order. So, so I'm filming these episodes and I'm not ready to post them yet because 40 boxes of comic books is a life long collection that's totally out of control right now because over the years things got taken out of one box put in another and it's all a mess so when you see those episodes in the fall you're going to see me sorting through material and definitely if you ever need any type of visual um proof that i'm batshit crazy <laughs> i think the comic book collection would be probably it it's you know i mean i'm, I'm joking around because again the main thing with collecting, and this is what I tell people all the time, and they look at me like, yeah, okay, if you're not having fun doing this, then don't do it. You know, this is supposed to be fun. The monetary value of your collection is a separate topic completely. You need to collect the things that you love. You surround yourself, as I have in my little, in my, this is like my little writing den here at home. You surround yourself with things that you like, things that have value to you, things that strike a chord with you. This is the truth about collecting that is seldom talked about. You don't do it because I have a million dollars in Spider-Man comics or I have a, you know, whatever it is. I have, I have a complete run of Spawn. Um, and I have the, I have whatever, you know, I have original this and that. Um, I get that. I truly do. Um, and you need to be aware of what the monetary value of your collection is. Uh, and it's okay to be fanatical now. And again, obviously with certain things associated with the late, great Neil Adams, I'm quite fanatical about it. I really like that um, era. I really like all the work he did, not only for DC, but throughout his career. But in the 60s and 70s, he did superb work for DC. Um, and so did others. There are others that I have an affinity for. Let me show you another one. When now this goes back to the uh, to the eighties, there was an artist who worked on Batman named Don Newton. He was a really great artist. He didn't work on that series long enough for me, but I really liked Don Newton's approach to Batman. So at a convention once, I bought a page of original artwork, you know, by Don Newton, and this is from Batman three hundred and seventy four. I've been meaning to show this for some time. I used to have much more artwork. I still have a few other pieces, but not much. I sold most of it. I know my wife has a, has a Sergio uh, Aragones. Is that how you pronounce his last name? I believe so. She has a, a drawing he did for her and he gave it to her. She, he didn't even charge her. It's just a little picture that he drew of a man holding a flower and he gave it to my wife. Uh, and I have some other things like that too. But um, I had a Sal Buscema uh, Marvel team up that I sold to a collector in Italy for a very large sum of money. So I've done that. I understand the monetary value. This is something that um, years and years ago um, I offered for sale and nobody bought it. Uh, and I, I'm glad I'm glad nobody bought it uh, because now I'll never sell it. So this represents old school Batman. I love the moody frames that Don Newton painted. Or, I'm sorry, he, he drew. And um, I forget who the inker is on this. I have to look it up. But Don Newton was much, much better at Batman than anyone ever gave him credit for. So this type of collecting is, is interesting as long as you're careful with your budget. Sometimes I've gone over budget and it's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But if you hang on to most of it, um, you know, it's nice to have. And, of course, I consider myself a caretaker. I am a caretaker and especially at my age, <laughs> I'm a, I'm an old caretaker. Uh, I'm a caretaker of this material, and I need to make certain that it goes to the proper people uh, when I am walking a different path, shall we say. And uh, that has already been taken care of, um, and so um, and so on. So, anyways, uh, just a quick little little episode talking about being a fan, being a little bit fanatical about collecting and so forth and um interesting one though over here in this corner i put these bookshelves together very quickly 
this is three different series that I collect, and it is Walt Slade by Bradford Scott. It's the Buchanan series by Jonas Ward, and it's in the uh, Stagecoach Station series. Uh, and these series are all vintage. They're no longer being written, uh, as far as I know. Um, and I have a bibliography, a sheet, a, a reference on what I have and what I need. Not quite complete yet, after all these decades. I have a couple to get for all three of these, to have them all. And all of them that I have don't fit here, so I have more in a box. So I'm going to have a problem. But that room will be done in the fall. And so that type of thing. But sometimes you, you lose track of what you're doing. So I have three Buchanan's Manhunt. I have two Buchanan's Siege. Uh, two, Buchanan calls the shots. Three, Buchanan takes over. Um, three, Buchanan's gamble. And three, Buchanan on the prod. I don't need three, but you know, over the years when you're out on the road, and I collect a lot when I'm traveling, because um, I go to places where I know I'm going to find this type of material, and you just grab what's there. You just buy bulk. You know, Go to a secondhand bookstore, you fill a box, you know, and that's the way to do it. Uh, flea markets, antique shops. I've talked about this before. So anyways, that's how it works. And uh, more to come on comic books and so forth and collecting in the fall. I do have a lot of uh, other, hopefully you'll find interesting um, episodes scheduled in between. So in the meantime, stay well, stay happy, feed your brain. Read a book.